the foot of the Gower Peninsula in South Wales lies the village of Port Hainan. It is thought that the village was named after the 11th century Prince Hainan, and it is believed that he built the castle here, and some claim that the dovecot called Calver Hall, which is built into the cliff, formed a part of that ancient ruin. There is confirmation that this building was indeed used to house pigeons, as is evidenced by the artificial nests that were an integral part of the building. It is believed that it was originally situated under the ancient castle, and the cave beneath the castle was fronted with a large wall, completely closing off the cave behind. This is similar in construction to that of Carragannon Castle. It has a tunnel running through the side of the cliff which was used to access and protect the water source. But this tunnel also had the same artificial nests and was likewise used to house their pigeons. Inside Culver Hall there is a stairway that extends up four floors which made Culver Hall a very effective battlement guarding against invasion from the seas. Port Ainan once thrived on the booming oyster fishing trade, and the remains of the old oyster pools and harbour wall can still be seen low tide. Most of these little harbours in south and the west of Wales also had a population who were, let's say, somewhat complacent towards, if not themselves, directly involved in, well, let's say, a little smuggling activity in the 17th century. The very well-known Lucas family of Port Ainan, and in particular John Lucas, were believed to be very much involved and suspected of leading such activities. The first house we know of that belonged to the Lucas family was called Brownfield in Reynoldston. The house, it is claimed, was built on top of an old Roman encampment, but the Lucas family argued that this was the remains of the original Lucas family building, which was left deserted by Geoffrey Lucas in the 15th century. David Lucas, who was the third descendant from Geoffrey, had three sons, John, William and Thomas. John was the elder of the three. He was the one who left the village to travel and seek adventure. The following is a quote from the Lucas family historical records and it was made available by the National Library of Wales through the digital records of the Archaeologia Cambronesis. John, it is said, that in his career incurred a spirit wild and lawless, albeit a young man of fine and bold front, and very comely in the eye, and brave like a lion, but lawless and of fierce and un governable violence. He left his father at Stout Hall and went to divers strange countries, engaging his hands in much violation of all laws, but always for our Lord the King. 
After nine years, he returned home and his father provided him with a portion and an estate and built him a residence at Port Ainan called Esalt House on his marriage with Jane Grove of Paviland. The record then goes on to say... It had a poor effect upon the young man, for he soon set to making a stronghold of Esalt House, with the battlement and walls whereof all around reaching even unto the cliff, and the rocks on the edge of the wild part of the foreshore near unto Port Ainan, and stored said stronghold with arms, and also rebuilded and repaired another stronghold called Calvert Hall, near thereunto in the rocks, and rendered both inaccessible, save for a passage thereinto through the cliff. He also connected the two strongholds by a passage under the ground, whereof no man was told the mouth thereof. He became outlawed, engaged in smuggling matters, secured e pirates and e French smugglers, and rifle wrecked ships and forced mariners to serve him. He repelled all attempts to dislodge him. In these lawless pursuits he was assisted by George Appinan of Brinfield and Robert de Scourge and a band of lawless young men gathered around them, and over them they exercised sever authority. It was by their aid he extended said stronghold called Salt House, and rebuilt Calvert Hall, as aforesaid, and rewarded his men by dividing to them the spoils, and maintaining the poor in the country round. So essentially, the record says that John Lucas, after returning from a little harmless pirating in the king's name, developed and fortified both the Salt House and Calver Hall, clearly then known as Calvert Hall, and turned them both into a stronghold, which he had stashed with arms in order to discourage the excise men from poking around, as playing the message as can be seen, visitors were not welcome. Now coming back to the old salt house, there is evidence to show that it was in fact a work in operation and that it was built to extract salt from the sea for means of trade. It is said though that this was just a cover for John's more lucrative operations. In later life John returned to a lawful life and abandoned Calvert Hall and the Salt House. But a few generations later, another John Lucas found on some of the land he owned large deposits of red ochre, which was widely used in the manufacture of paint at the time. He purchased a number of sailing skiffs to transport the mineral across to Appledore and up the coast to Nash Point, Cardiff and also into Bristol. He grew very prosperous with this operation, but as the years went by and he was lying ill near death in his bed at the salt house, It is recorded that a great storm arose and his fleet of skiffs was sunk overnight. A 
Again, from the Archaeologica Cambronesis. He loses all his skiffs in one night of the great storm on Crowder's Key and Sky Sea and Overton Mare, whereby he was rid of much wealth and patrimony, and he paint material was after carried by the skiffs that did come from Appledore, but not his skiffs. And of grief, therefore, said John Lucas, bursted, and was dead, and was laid in the earth, as lie give commandment near unto a bank of sand beyond his mansion of the old salt house, where he had builded a road for a paint to be put on the skiffs, and in the same dreadful night a bolt did come upon his salt house's mansion, and he sea broke his battlements thereof, and tore it even unto a great cliff, and so was not to be lived in no more. And there ends the story of John Lucas and the pirates of the Gawa Peninsula.